low cost, you know, startup cost. That's mm -hmm. what my blog is, you know, is, is talking to people with that. They don't have much money. Like I, I didn't have much money to start. Okay. Now, one part of the blog, I want to be about the opportunities. But then the other part of the blog, I want to be about the products that I sell. Now, should I make that a whole new blog? Or can I make that another page of the of the blog that I'm currently doing? Uh, just make it another page of the one that you're currently doing because you don't want to try and split that traffic. Because if you're okay. going to be talking about getting started for free and all the opportunities, you're going to want to showcase some of the opportunities that you're already working on. So it's just going to tie in hand in hand with those two topics. Okay, so um, now a blogger, okay, so I should start like a, a brand new page? Yeah, just a new page. Okay, 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 I got you. Okay, I understand that. One. Yeah, keep it all on one, one blog. So one you, blog. Have, you have your daily content that you write about, about start for free, your opportunities, and then right. have a separate page, you know, current opportunities that I'm already involved in or, you know, that I can help you with or, you know, what any of, anything of that nature that you want to start on, but have that in a separate style of post. Okay, that's one. Two, all right, email marketing is a must. I know, but I have the worst problem understanding. Okay, get response. One of my other business partners, he's my, he was a mentor of mine. So usually things he follow, I follow. Get response at a 30-day free trial. Okay, I got confused. I loaded my contacts in there. But then now they'll tell you like, they'll go with a web form in different places. And I can understand that. When it got to the autoresponder, they're telling me, you know, um, how to start autoresponder. That I make like four or five messages to. Um, now my problem is, where? How do you come up with these messages? You have to take them on your own, or there a certain time or uh, certain things you would say when you give these messages um, when you do autoresponder. Yeah, each campaign is a little bit different. Depends on what you're trying to push forward. Um, you know, my campaigns are all written in 30-day increments, so they have a 30-day drip campaign, which runs about every two to two to five days, depending on the actual topic that they that they requested on. So, I mean, it really just depends on what you want to try and push, and and really how fast you want to have movement on that and, and how many autoresponder messages that you're doing in total. So all of those are factors of, of designing your, your ad copy for autoresponders. Okay, so just say, um, I want, okay, what about uh, uh, as an item that is, I just don't really want, I just want to put it out there. It's not about pushing. How long should I keep it running? That one item. If you're going to have one specific item, um, like say on your store or something of that nature, that's going to be more of a broadcast post um, that you can probably do while it's on sale or if there's a discount for that item or if it's the hot item of the week or something of that nature or the item of the month, um, then, then you'll have that running, you know, either once a week or, you know, have that campaign running on a, on an interval to where you have a newsletter of people that are responding that want, you know, your, your deals or your discounts or something of that nature. That's when it's going to come in into an autoresponder type when it's just on kind of a newsletter feed. Um, but that's, that's a completely different type of campaign as well. When you have followers that are on your newsfeed and something that you have to generate that content every week or month or whatever, you know, interval you set up for on, on a particular campaign. Okay, so in autoresponders, I control that myself. How yeah. you know, how frequent I want it out, and depending on what I'm targeting, is that correct? Correct. So okay. it's all it's all going to change based on those variables, um, what you want to do with it, and really, it's really just kind of where your audience is, because you got to kind of you have to know your audience a little bit um, when generating the autoresponders and kind of getting those messages going forward and they tie into each other. If it's a, if it's a true drip campaign, it'll kind right. of tie into each other. 
Um, if it's just a newsletter, it can be new content every time. Um, if it's something that's a product special or something of that nature where it's a customer style newsletter, then right. it can just be just about anything that you're, you know, you want to market to your customers. If they know that they're signing up just for your, you know, basically your products and specials or promotions. Okay. That's so difficult. Okay. That's my problem. They're so difficult. I don't, um, okay. I'm going to read up on that. I, I don't understand. Okay, um, that's one. That's two. Oh, I forgot the other one. I'm so sorry. Um, my major thing was autoresponders. That's really kicking me. Because I've had this 30-day trial, and I really haven't done anything with it. Mm. And I'm noticing traffic is so slow into my website. I got a new website. It's so slow to get. I'm not getting traffic. And I've done traffic exchanges. It seems like people are going to look at the products, but they're not buying. Gotcha. So, yeah, when it comes to really product purchasing, um, you know, developing that customer developing that is something that's going to be to where you're actually, you know, contacting those customers. You know, you're actually getting a hold of them, you know, getting that information out there, um, you know, answering a few questions. Uh, but you want to get that interaction flowing. That's what really is going to lock in customers. Okay. So is it now? Okay. Um, I have another mentor. Which I deal with two people, you and another young, another lady. Um, now she's saying call. Is calling a must? Because I know now it's a computer area you know, where Tyson teaches how not you don't have to call. Use what you know the tools. Um, to grab them in with landing pages and other things. But when I was talking to her, she told me, well, you got to pick up the phone and do old-fashioned calling and break it down. Now, that's kind of hard doing with products because, I, you know, I, I saw a range of things. So hmm. what is the best way to get these products out there without calling? I mean, marketing and posting, I mean, really uh, pictures, dis accurate descriptions, um, discount codes, um, you want to get interaction on, you know, anything that will really entice the customer. Cause I mean, face it, when you, when you're online, the, the, the shoppers are savvy, the ones that buy online, they, they can find products just about anywhere. So right. you want to try and get that offer proposition to get them to start buying from you instead of anywhere else. So you got to either entice them or offer them something. You know, you can offer loyalty programs. You can offer free shipping campaigns, 10% off of clearance items. You know, all those kinds of different things can be offered up to try and entice those customers to start buying from you rather than anywhere else. But the, the main thing is you want to get that first, you know, interaction, that sale done. So that way that they have a good experience and they can continue to purchase items from you. Um, so, you know, you want to get that interaction very well. Sometimes calling does help, but that's usually going to be when the buying process has already happened. As far as the calls, when it's something new, um, you can make those calls out. But as far as when it's just a particular product and you have a wide assortment of products, like say they just visited, you know, your Shopify store and they were just kind of browsing around, a call may or may not, you know, be worth your time. Because most of the time they can say, oh, I was just looking around. Um, but sometimes they, you know, that can lead to more sales if they, you know, know that there's a real person, you know, know that, 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 you know, they feel a little bit more comfortable when they, you know, know who is behind the store and, and all that kind of thing. But, you know, that's really what you, you can do, you know, as far as the calling. It just brings it a little bit more personable, um, which, you know, that can help. But it can take up a lot of time as well if you have – if you start generating a good amount of traffic and you have to call on every single one of your sales could be more counterproductive, you know, as far as the time that it takes you to call, you know, a client and get one sale versus if you can ramp up and get your, you know, your descriptions better and, and your, and the store and autoresponders running better and automate that process. Cause the longer that you have where you're spending time on the phone, that takes away from anything else that you're doing. And it takes away the automation of the internet. Okay. Um, all right. I, I just need traffic. Now, okay. Then someone told me to pay traffic. Now, 
I know Facebook has got the you know it's fake traffic. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm saying like this. All right. Um, I um my other gentleman that I've been following, we've been following each other back and forth for three years. He tells me ideas. Okay. Now he he hops around so much that sometimes I don't. I, every time you go to an idea, I do not go because he hops around. He don't stay. With one idea too long, much long, he get tired and then go move somewhere else. Yeah. Now he was talking about solo ads and Facebook ads. Okay, because mm-hmm. I know sometimes organic track when I do it free, it does take a little longer, but it can get done. I know that. God I've been doing it for years, free traffic. But my websites are hot. There, people are looking at it. They're not buying. Okay, so. He was telling me to go ahead and just put out a Facebook ad, like a five, you know, my little five dollars a day, and put out a Facebook solo ad. Do you think that's lucrative? Do you think it will benefit me any? Um, it can, but it's got to be something that's already been proven to be sold. It's got to be a hot item, um, people, something that people are already purchasing. And it's got to be a value proposition to where they're they're already trusting that you know doing it inside the Facebook platform can be good because people already trust Facebook. They basically feel if you've already gotten it on Facebook, then it's safe. It'll be okay to purchase from that site. You know there shouldn't be anything bad about it, or you know be worried about their information. You know when they go to buy something online. So having those ads up, but it's got to be a product that somebody's going to be wanting to purchase at that given time. So you know running a you know, an ad on like maybe even a Tuesday or Wednesday might not be the best time to, to run those solo, those ads, you know, across Facebook because somebody's going to get paid on Friday. So they may not find that ad again. They may not find your product. They may end up buying the same thing, just not from you because you posted an ad on one day and they didn't have the money. So, you know, those are the things that can happen when, you know, ads are up you know, as far as the timing of ads. So, you know, the, there's a lot more that goes into just posting an ad on Facebook. Um, as far as my personal opinion, I don't really like solo ads um, because you're basically, you know, emailing someone else's list. They signed up, you know, or they got that information from who knows where, who knows how, and what interest they actually have on that list. And you never know who is actually on that list if it's getting to those real destinations or right. whatever it happens to be, you know, when it comes to solo ads. And they can get kind of pricey, uh, yes, but you can. basically build your own solo ads by generating leads, capturing email addresses, and building your own list, you know, with all the tools that we have. Um, you can definitely build your own list and your own buyer's list and have your own solo ad market. <laughs> Uh, just like I've built with that lead list, I have 15,000 already. You know, you can build up your own solo ad list. Um, definitely, if you start, once you start getting those sales rolling in, then you have a list of people that have actually bought in from you. So then you have a buyer's list on top of your solo list um, from anybody that's, you know, that you captured information from. So it's always good to, you know, build up that following, have that traffic, so that you have your own list because you never know who's on the other end of a solo ad list. Um, just in my personal opinion, um, you know, I'd rather get the information from that people build some kind of rapport or relationship before emailing them out. Because if you're just like, Hey, buy my product, Hey, buy my product. And that's all they see all day, every day on those different email addresses, you know, and contacts and they don't know who it's coming from, where it originated from, you know, or, any information behind that sale, they somehow got attached to this list and just haven't removed themselves as of yet. Okay. All right. You know, that's what can, can that's, that's what can happen with some solo ads. And that's not the case with all of them. You, I've known people that have had success with solo ads, but the most of the ones that I've seen, it's been people that have built their own solo ads and now they're marketing that solo ad to other people because they've built it and sold on it. Now they're saying here you can contact all of my people. I've made my sales on it. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Okay, all right, that's another. Um, I think that was it. I'm just trying to get traffic. I'm trying to give you the buy to my web. It's seeing it. It's out there. People are seeing the stuff. They're liking it, but they're just not going in their pocket and buying it. And I know a person got to see it at least seven times for them to buy. 
I know mm -hmm. that I know that, but I uh, the thing is just that they're not buying, and I just don't know what else I could do. Like on my eBay site, I still got eBay. You know, mm -hmm. although I have other site, I still have eBay. I tweaked it. I tweaked this. I tweaked the title and things like that. But they're liking it, but they still haven't bought it. So I don't know what else. Um, someone to change the price. Now we've been. I've been a dropshipper for like three years now. So mm -hmm. changing the price, I don't go down on my price too much anymore. But I've been in the industry for quite a while with dropshipping. Yeah. So um, if I don't get over two, you know twenty dollars for sale, you know for over here, I just don't. I really don't list the product. So I know that I can see my product less expensive somewhere else. But if I guess if my title was right, or if I if I, I marketed it better, they will purchase it for me no matter what. And I don't like I said, um, I don't know why I'm doing wrong with it because they're liking it, but they're not buying. So with with say uh, your eBay, what's what's your eBay ranking, your rating on there? I don't know. I don't check it. Yeah, so I mean that's that's what you're gonna have to look into is your eBay ranking, um, where you've ranked star wise, uh, how many positive interactions that you have, the reviews that are on your sellers your seller profile. Those are the things online consumers are looking at before they buy from people. So you know it, if you've got a negative remark or you know a product didn't go the way that someone else thought it was, that can really diminish a bunch of sales. You know just yeah, by having one review. Yeah, I got one negative mark. I got all positive. I do got one negative. So, I mean, definitely you, you do what you can to rectify that, um, you know, so you can have something that says that that customer says that it was rectified. You know, maybe they thought something was going to be shipped in one day and they got it in five, but you made it up by this method and they're all happy and fine with it. So, I mean, just making sure that that, that is noted and rectified can, you know, you know, that negative remark but that's that's kind of what people are looking at you know when they have those different reviews um, different posts online because I mean people will be able to check those things out when it yeah. you know you're all over the internet like the way that we are people can find information and find different things out so you want to make sure that everything's on the up and up so they feel comfortable because that's when people are gonna buy is when they feel comfortable you know especially when it's online so that's why you know, the other mentors saying phone calls, they can help because it'll make people feel a little bit more comfortable. But I mean, any interaction can make that happen, you know, whether it be emails, whether it be messages, phone calls, as long as they feel that it's a genuine, genuine interaction. Because some people write their autoresponders and sound like a robot. They don't have any personalization to it. They don't use names. They don't use the tagging properly. And it just really doesn't look, you know, like they're trying to send a direct message to that person. You know, it just looks like, hey, this is a copied message. You know, you can tell some of those messages. I'm sure you've been, you, yeah, know, that's you know, those long paragraph scripts, you know, that people have used before, you know, yeah. and all they do is, you know, maybe they swap out your name or sometimes it's just like, hey, check this out, blah, 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 and they go into a paragraph, you yeah. know. So those copy and paste type, you know, messages are starting to resonate with people less and less. You know, people are over the hype. They're over, you know, all of those different things, you know, that are, that come up on the internet. They, you know, it's it's been well documented, and people are well aware of it now. So to get past that, you got to do a couple of more interactions, and you got to, you know, ask a couple of questions. You want to get that interaction flowing. That's what's really probably going to help you generate more sales is to okay. get interaction. You know, when people are talking about it, when people are, you know, commenting, you know, asking questions, those type of things, you know you know, asking how much certain stuff is or, you know, asking about, you know, different, you know, discounts or anything of that nature, you know, any type of interaction you want to jump on that and make sure that it's out there uh, because that's probably going to end up giving you more sales with those interactions. Okay. That's, that was mainly because I was at a standstill. Mm -hmm. um, I just built another, like I said, I, I'm expanding but it seemed like the more um, what I'm expanding in, like I said, people. Are, oh my God, I get so many positive, you know, remarks about it, but they just still won't buy it. And um, I didn't know what else to do with it, so that's why I said maybe I, I get, you know, if I talk to you, maybe you put some ideas in my head. Maybe I go back and look over it with some fresh, 
you know, with some fresh ideas, mm-hmm. and then maybe I will see my you know, my era. As I know it's me, but I just don't know what to change. Now, like I said, I know email marketing is part of it, but like I said, I was stuck on the autoresponder. But you explained it to me, so I kind of have an idea what to go do with that now. Um, that's it. Thank you. I mean, that's all I had. Um, like I said, I, I got to tell you, thank you so much. You have done a lot. You explained so much to me. I am everywhere. I wake up, be believers. I saw you here. I saw you there. I am everywhere. And it's kind of funny. It just, it's really happened when I connected with you because you told me how to, you know, you told me about Twitter feed and told me things like that that I've never even heard of. Mm-hmm. So now people, like, I, you know, I, I hear, I go in my inbox or I see a message, well, I saw you this on Facebook or I saw you here and I say, wow, I don't even remember doing that. But things just, like you said, people see you, they have fi- they find ways to find out who you are, what you're doing. And people do do that to me now. Since I'm out there, people know I'm out there. And I didn't know how to do those things until I contacted you. So I, I say thank you, Buzz. Definitely, I mean that's that that's what I'm here for. I mean, I teach those different things. That's all inside of MSI. The autoresponders, the marketing, building your list. It's all there. That's what it's that's what it's designed to do. Teach you those things that allow you to do it anywhere. Right, because my LinkedIn list, and that's more business. You know, business to business, mm-hmm. it has grown so much because of you know a post and people seeing who I am. So I just want, you know, I told you, when I knew I was going to have this, I was going to tell you, I was going to tell you, thank you. Because before, about a year or two ago, people, didn't, they, people knew I was, a little bit knew what I was doing, but they, they didn't trust me. Mm-hmm. Now people be looking for my Facebook post every morning. Oh, you didn't post this morning, what's going on? They be looking for it because I do it every morning. You know, I'm on Instagram every day. I post on Instagram twice a day. So when I don't post on Instagram twice a day, Somehow messing with why you didn't post today. So I just want to say thank you because I would have never even went this far if you kind of didn't show me that, you know, this is what it is. And how some of the things you can do for free. Yep. And that's when I t- you know, took it a step further. There's a lot of you guys are disabled like me. They don't have the money to put it out there. They might have time, but they don't have money to put it out there to go get it done. Exactly. So I target people disabled or people that have low income and show them that you can start a business or you can do this with no money. And exactly. you can. You're going to take some money down the end. I say you got to have some, but not right now. You can start it until you make some. Exactly. If you make some, then you get yourself an opportunity. I just gave um, a young lady, I just emailed her today. My MSI link because she was a, she's a bus driver, and um, I saw her, and she said, "Wow, you still do? I see you everywhere, and you know, you know, with your with your leg, I still see you everywhere." I said, "Yeah," I said, "I got a business." So mm-hmm. I told her what I did. I told her how I got out there. She because she looked up on Google, called me back and said, "I see you. You on this page?" I put the Google. It was like Queen House of this, Queen House of this. And then that's why I start talking about you. I said mm-hmm. I got that as a system. I, and, that's, and she started. She looked at the information. Told me she's gonna see me tomorrow. So I'm gonna talk. I hope she signed up tomorrow. The MSI okay. and start something because she needs the money bad. And it's uh, so many product lines she can choose from. And yeah. So I'm telling you, you just don't know with MSI. You've done so much for people like me that didn't have the money, but at the time to put in the work to get the stuff done. That was me. I didn't have the income, but I had the time to do what I had to do. So when the income was made, I was able to put it out different places. So I just want to tell you thank you. Because I don't know if you get told thank you enough. I know I'm going to tell you thank you because you helped me a whole lot. Yeah, definitely appreciate it. You know, so that's why I keep doing these videos, you know, give me that time to, you know, help you out, you know, and get you, get you going in the direction that you want to go, you know? So, I mean, that's, that's really what it's about. I mean, MSI is just the starting point. 
you know, it allows you to, like you're saying, get started, you know, learn and earn and then, you know, get moving on really what you want to do. So, I mean, it's just a, it's just a good starting point. It takes away all the obstacles that are in, you know, people's way from the start, you know, it allows them, you know, you get the, you get a bunch of products you can market, you get email autoresponders, you know, email marketing, video marketing, you get all of that all in one package, you know, to get started with. And then you can then move, move forward with learning all those different techniques You can learn how all of those different pieces come together and help you close those different deals. It's so much training. Oh my goodness. So much. I have, the training is awesome. I can't, you know what? I just, you are uh, the day you sent me the email, you sent to the gentleman named Juan. Mm -hmm. I told Juan when we first, um, he been following me for a couple years. And I told him when we first got in the MSI, I said, you need to, I told him to been messaging. I said, I'm going to tell you a little bit, but I said, the one who taught me, I said, you need to get in touch with this man. I said, you have no idea what he can tell you. I said, you didn't see, I said, when you met me, you, I wasn't at nowhere like this. He said, you wasn't. I said, you're right. I said, I didn't get this way until I met this gentleman. So he's supposed to have been emailed you a long time ago. I didn't know what the hold that was. But I'm glad you got in con he contact or you got in contact with him. Mm -hmm. Because he need he needs someone to teach him like you teach me. And like I said, I think he see me more as a friend, as someone to listen to. Mm -hmm. He'll listen to an extent, then he'll go off. I think you need someone that's like you. I mean, you've been in the business longer, and uh, it's like a man to man. Sometimes I, I don't know. Is I know I'm a woman. I can handle my business. But sometimes man-to-man -man conversation seem like he seemed like he works well with. Okay. Was the first business he been with me. When him and I started something else, he did well with me. But then I had to pass it on to, I gave him to someone else in my downline. This other gentleman, he did great with. So I think with me, he sees me more as, uh, he tried to get up with me a long time ago. I, didn't, I turned it down. So he don't see me as a business partner. He see me as just a female. So gotcha. I hope that he can see you as a business partner that could take him somewhere so he can go, but he wants to learn. Uh -huh. And I know you places. So I, I think you can take him much places. I know you do. I know what you did for me. And I've been told to contact you because I think he needs to, someone else. I, I, I'm glad he signed under me, but he don't listen to me. Okay. He won't take me seriously. Gotcha. I think he'll take me seriously. Yeah, that's that's how it works. I mean, sometimes people just resonate differently with different people, and that's why there's there's so many different parts, and you know, so much different material out there. So I have all these different you know webinars and stuff that I throw out there uh, from other trainers that I that I've learned from, and different videos that I've learned. You know, that's why you guys have you know that's why I have Tyson's program in there. That's why I have Traffic Tsunami in there, and that different bulk boot camp. That's why those different pieces are in there. Because sometimes just that different information, that different resignation with other people, you know, is really, really what happens, you know, along the long list of, you know, different people. Because there's so many, so much different stuff out there. So many different people, so many different walks of life and ways to connect, you know, just that one little, one little quirk, you know, that, that ties people together can be something that really, you know, makes or breaks somebody's success, you know, sometimes, you know not really their success because it's real all on all, all on them. But, you know, the, the thing that stops them from quitting, you know, that, that keeps them going forward. They'll, they'll meet with one other person and be like, okay, now I think I can do this. You know, and that's, that's really where it needs to go is just getting that belief level up and they think they can do it and they're sure they can do it. And sometimes it just takes, even if it's the same exact message that you're saying, somebody else, hearing it from somebody else can just click with them all that much sweeter you know, the way that it happens. It's, it's weird. I've seen it happen so many different times that it, it just saying the same thing, but it comes out of somebody else's mouth. It just, they just click with it. Okay. Well, uh, thank you so much. Um, I've learned a lot today. Uh, like I said, you open my eyes. So when I go, when I go look at it tonight, I know what to do with it now. All right. So thank, thank, you, thank you for giving me your time today. All right. Have a good one, Leslie. Do as well. Bye.